Okay, so here's how shit went. I post review. TMS Entertainment claims and blocks my review. I file a dispute, saying that the review falls under fair use. TMS denies my dispute. I outright delete the review. And I go back and make this tweaked, revised version of the review. Was the claim automated? Was it done by TMS themselves? I don't know. But either way, that thing fell into commentary, review, critique, and criticism. Falling under the DMCA guidelines as fair use. And it was not treated as such. Okay, TMS Entertainment, that review was under 20 minutes. Real life is comprised of 13 episodes that are 20 plus minutes. It does not replace the work in question, nor does it replace the experience of watching it. And hey, despite some criticisms, it was a mostly positive review. I like real life. I recommend people watch real life or at least give it a chance. But you wouldn't know that unless you watch the review. Now this revised edition was made the way it is, just in case the claim was automated by YouTube's bots. But if the claim was made manually by TMS Entertainment themselves, guys, it's a review. And hey, this time around, I'm not even gonna monetize it. Yeah, this thing is unmonetized. So if you think that I'm gonna be making money off of this thing, I'm not. As far as I'm concerned, I just want to get this review to as many people as I can as someone who enjoyed the show. So being unmonetized and having the intentions that it has, please don't block this or take it down. Making this thing took plenty of time. I would put music and some audio cues in this intro, but I don't have any. Sorry. You know, it's been said that a lot of Japanese adults, whether it be overworked businessmen, neets, or others of varying occupations, have a desire to become teenagers again and relive their high school lives one more time, which begins to explain the popularity of high school anime that just seem to flood our collective anime fan buttholes every single year. You can't walk a single foot without tripping over at least one of these, and if you're an avid anime fan, you've probably at least seen one in your life. It's kind of interesting how saturated this stuff is in Japan, from high school dramas, films, and so on. But what makes it even more interesting, and this is related to the subject at hand, is how all this stuff catches the eyes of adults more than they do actual teenagers. Normally, a Western high school drama or cartoon is blatantly aimed at teens or preteens, but not anime. This is usually adult stuff. Sure, I bet there are Japanese teens that manage to see these things too, but when you watch that one ecchi that stars teenage characters, or this drama that stars teenage characters, or even this one show that can't help but bring out the EDGE that also stars teenage characters and they're all set in some kind of school? You know who that show was aimed for. Anime, for better or for worse, is a dumping ground for high school stories, which makes something like real life look even more like an odd one out, even though you'd think it'd be yet another one to add to the pile. With all of its episodes released simultaneously, obviously following the Netflix model for the sake of encouraging binge watching, and adapted from a web manga, real life is probably the natural order of things. Are adults who want to relive their high school days the primary demographic for these teenage high school dramas? It's only logical that there is to be a high school anime literally about an adult who turns back into his teenage self and relives the high school experience. Let's take the premise from that one Zac Efron film you might not have seen and do our own spin on it with the power of choppy Japanese animation! Real life has quite a few tricks up its sleeve that make it more than meets the oversized eye. A high school anime that uses its adult as a high school student premise to not only tell a compelling story about a man's re-entry into a realm he had left behind a decade ago, but to highlight and explore the parallelisms between the teenage experience and the adult one. The anime is mainly centered on one Arata Kaisaki, a 27-year-old shut-in who had left the life of a salesman behind due to a tragic and traumatic experience with his old company. Picking up part-time jobs to sustain himself and is filled with regrets for past actions. After a failed job interview and getting drunk, he comes face to face with a mysterious man, Ryo Yoake, a worker for Real Life Laboratory who promptly invites Arata to partake in Real Life, an experimental program established to reform needs and others whose adult lives are troubled and are in need of reform by giving its subjects the chance to retry the teenage high school experience over the course of a year, thanks to a drug 
drug that can regress the age of one's body back to their 17 year old selves. After a short discussion, Arata agrees to his offer and awakens as a teenager, already enrolled at Alba High School with the support of Ryo, who also looks on and supports him as a fellow high school student. There he meets Chizuru Hishiro, a deadpan, awkward, and socially inept girl who seeks the resolve to make friends despite her interesting inability to socialize normally, Rena Kariyu, the competitive vice captain of the school's volleyball team who tries to be the best at everything she does, but is overshadowed by some of her peers, Kazuo Mioga, an upbeat, academically excellent student whose smarts are equal to his naivete and is the subject of Rena's secret affections, Honoka Tamarai, the captain of the volleyball team and is a friend and rival of Rena, An Onoya, a girl with glasses who lets on to be more than she appears early on in the anime, and other, more minor characters like Nobunaga Asagi and Akira Inukai, both of whom are Honoka's childhood friends. Now a teenage boy once again, Arata's goal is to live out his newly reforged youth for a year and, with this opportunity, reevaluate himself and learn how to overcome his inner conflicts, and when the time is up, he will complete his real life and everyone he meets who isn't a part of the experiment will be wiped of their memories of him. And if he tells anyone about it, it will be called off and he'll have his own memories wiped instead, so there's an incentive not to tell anyone. Real life is meant to rehabilitate those who can't seem to move on and grow as individuals. The question now is what will Arata learn from his experience that will help his adult future? After all, high school dramas usually have twists and turns. Real life is the first time I've ever seen an anime where all of its 13 episodes were released at once. No fuss, no waiting for the next episode after the buzz of the previous one is lowered. You can watch this newly released summer anime however which way you like, which I find to be quite refreshing. It can be easy for my enthusiasm while waiting for a new episode to dip, and exceptions are quite rare for me. The worst case scenario has me outright drop shows, not only because of subpar quality, but also the sheer diminishing excitement one gets as days go by just so the story can continue. By having all episodes out of the gate, it makes it easy for one to control the flow of the experience at will. A high school anime that doesn't have this obligatory lengthy wait after a cliffhanger that you may or may not care about. Real life could have been yet another high school comedy drama to be seen and forgotten considering it has so much teenage drama to the point where it's almost forced down your throat, though I'll get to that, but the material that's there is there for a reason, and that reason is Arata himself. Being the kind teenage protagonist that he is, Arata is as empathetic and caring for his acquaintances as you'd expect a character like him to be, Except he's not a teenage protagonist, he's an adult protagonist in a teenage body. A twist that serves as the crux of a lot of the show's heart and additional perspective because, as it turns out, he isn't so much of a shut-in like the real-life experiment is meant to aim for, just a man who's already had a look at the adult experience and saw how cruel it can be and overwhelmed him. As a result, Arata's viewpoint isn't merely that of a man who looks at the adolescent activity going on around him with a more mature lens that sees it as kids being kids, but he's also the problem solver, a man whose actions leave effects on how these other teen characters move throughout their arcs. Chizuru is the primary focus of Arata's efforts, the socially stagnant and introverted girl who is so oblivious to all obvious social cues, general common sense, and independent thought processes that you think she has autism or some other developmental or social disorder that the anime promptly inflates to exaggerated degrees as to make jokes. It's not intended to be mean, nor is it played as mean-spirited. The anime the anime doesn't even confirm whether or not she does have autism, but considering how her growth from childhood to adolescence is described, it's easy to think that she does even if it's never said. If Arata is this outgoing personality, Chizuru is the downbeat loner whom Arata aims to help throughout the show. Another anime would have him do this directly, a one-on-one -on -one confrontation that might not even work on a character like her. But real life does something smarter that's true to our protagonist's advantage of being an adult. He helps Chizuru be a a more active person by helping others understand her or helping them with their own personal problems and dilemmas that might just set an example for her to follow. The others of this thankfully modest cast play such interwoven roles to varying degrees in this overarching plotline that looking back on it feels like looking at a decently stitched sweater. It looks fine, but it isn't perfect. Yes, this is another high school anime, there's no getting around it. Indeed, when real life goes into its teenage subject matter, it goes in as you'd expect. Subplots are present and accounted for, and each one tackles subject matters that are 
stock, or at least relatively stock for this type of genre. There's the usual misunderstandings, jealousy, crushes, pressures over schoolwork, teenage hijinks, and what have you. Though fortunately, we are spared from any beach episode. Thank God for that. It also doesn't help that the show prioritizes the development of certain characters more than another set. On one hand, Arata, Chizuru, Rena, Honoka, and even Ryo get some great scenes with effective character moments and development. From Arata's arc presenting a clear-cut maturity theme that defines him, Chizuru's resolve to improve her social life being more difficult than anticipated, all the way to Ryo having regret over his past failure, giving more dimension as to why he's just so dedicated to supporting Arata. On the other hand, though, Kazuomi isn't given as much material as he should. Honoka's childhood friends try to have some kind of presence in the show, but don't cut the mustard since they barely have anything to do that's relevant. And on? She's interesting, I suppose. She may even have the most electrifying personality out of the entire cast, but like the others, whatever history she has isn't really touched upon to any in-depth extent for what these 13 episodes provide. But if there's anything that resembles the biggest gripe, it's probably the drama itself. Not because it's bad drama or doesn't have powerful dramatic moments on occasion, it's just that the drama is stuff you've probably seen not only in high school anime, but high school media in general, and on its own, it's highly predictable. I doubt real life will get awards for having a conflict about one character seeing themselves as inferior to their close friend or this other subplot about one character misunderstanding another due to lack of communication. We've all seen this before in other stories, even outside of anime, and this is what I mean by the teenage drama being nearly forced. You take Arata out of the picture and suddenly the show is this slog of drama. This stretch of time where characters are at their most unlikable, with the main culprit being Rena. Holy shit, take a chill pill, Rena! It's like her character is engineered to spark some kind of dilemma or conflict, but bloated to levels so over the top, it kind of starts detracting from the overall believability. Most of the high school conflict in real life ties back to Rena, from her being distrustful and jealous of Chizuru because of her sincere but terrible smile that conveys the wrong message to people and the fact that she's a class representative alongside Kazuki to being pissed off that Honoka is so talented at sports and she isn't and OH NO! She fell over a ball and sprained her ankle! Now she can't practice volleyball for two weeks and quits the team because she's sad now! Real life tries to balance this and granted, she has her own moments of tangible humanity and her thoughts and motivations are even understandable. She loves Kazuomi and she's insecure about her self-worth, I get it. But when Arata isn't in this plot, the anime can't help but focus on this one bag of salt, the most teenage character in this teenage high school anime, if that makes any sense. The character that represents the high school anime side of real life to its essence. But that's a what if Arata wasn't in the story kind of scenario. If he wasn't in the story, Rena's bullshit would be the anime. But because Arata is here, because he is the main character, and because he's the one to shake up these otherwise stock high school anime proceedings, there's a point to be made about a failed adult who undergoes an experiment that's meant to reform him by exposing him to the frail, petty, unstable, and problematic sides of teenage life. As generic as the high school subject matter is, it's generic for a reason, and that's to add the adult perspective, Arata's perspective. As Ryo puts it, these kids have to experience hardships in youth so they can learn how to get back up and move on in their later years. But what does that say about Arata? Is he really any better than these high school who have all these problems weighing them down? Real life explores this, Arata's arc going through the motions about confronting his trauma regarding a female superior at his old job, and the disregard they had for her own life. Without spoiling it, it's an event that blew up his preconceptions about adult morality, selflessness, and ideals when that very same woman fell off the pedestal he had. It's a gripping revelation when watching. There's an episode dedicated to exploring this, in fact, which is why I feel it's best for new viewers to see it for themselves. It's probably my favorite episode, and in a position where his self-confidence is in shambles at the beginning of the series, it makes all the difference the more you learn about Arata that makes his strive to help his fellow students all the more palpable. He isn't simply good-natured and helpful for the sake of living up to an ideal or to make himself feel good about the deeds he's done. He helps others to help himself, to reinvigorate his own convictions to grow back into an adult, a man who falls down and must learn to pick himself up again. 
again. But the show also doesn't guarantee to the viewer that he will learn and grow back to adulthood. As previously stated, when his real life is over, everyone Arata's met will have their memories of his existence wiped away as he moves on to a renewed adult life. But what if he doesn't want to move on? What if he enjoys his renewed teenage life? What if he likes the new friends he's made and shared experiences with so much that having them forget who he was is too painful to accept? What if he wants to continue these experiences for the rest of his life? He isn't necessarily better than the teens he meets. He's simply learning alongside them. He does so for a different reason than those characters, yes, but he's on their level nonetheless. And if the show didn't have the heart, it wouldn't completely work as a story about the effect of one person who isn't perfect but tries his best. And real life has plenty of heart. It's a pretty damn hilarious comedy, and by hilarious, I mean genuinely so. It isn't often a comedic anime gets my funny bones all stimulated with actual laughter, primarily due to Japanese humor not really being my cup of tea. At best, it amuses me, which means I'm entertained even if I'm not totally on board with the joke. Real life is one of those rarities though, with gags so on point that I'm still surprised by them. Chizuru is hysterical. I generally I really dislike Dandre characters, but this is a case where her characterization are the butt of some of real life's best jokes. Then there are the smaller touches that don't add much, but make the show more nuanced in curious or comedic ways, like how An has this supposed crush on Arata, but is kept mostly ambiguous. She expresses feelings for him, but not in an outward way. Not a way that's really romantic, just friendly most of the time, and if anything, she seems to have feelings for Ryo as well. How much of her feelings is truth or not truth. Again, it's the smaller touches such as these that make real life even a tad more engaging than it already is. Whether for the mysterious or the ironic with the whole running gag of not being able to buy cigarettes and beer, nor can he be seen smoking or drinking lest he get into trouble. And though I won't spoil it, it's later revealed that there's another real life candidate in the story. Unfortunately, the show requires a sequel or two in order to complete this subplot as the show ends at the halfway point of the story. Which sucks, because the last few episodes are when the show exposes its true potential. From what I've gathered, there has yet to be enough material to make a second season, leaving this unfinished for a continuation that may or may not arrive. 13 episodes is enough for plenty of shows, but this is not one of them. Which sucks, because just when the show was getting really good and going somewhere interesting, it just ends. Show's over. Watch your other shows, or play video games, lots and lots of video games! Still, even if the drama isn't all that great and the ending leaves a lot to be filled in with a new season, real life is yet another refreshing twist to what is an oversaturated genre. The humor is just right, the characters we have are mostly likable enough, though the show prioritizes one set over another and Rena is a problem starter, and Arata's arc has plenty of heft to create further explorations in the parallels of adolescence and adulthood, even if it's obvious the story story we have isn't finished. For what it's worth, Real Life is a really good debut, and with all of the episodes available to watch in any pace you'd like, whether preferring to watch an episode a day or a full-on marathon, the freedom of choice in how you consume it is at your leisure. Personally, I watch three episodes a day with this one, and to think, the summer anime season has only recently started. Despite my issues, this is an anime worth checking out, so long as you know that it's in complete. Real Life is a high school anime about an adult who turns into a teenager. Though it might be something this show's main demographic might dream about, as it shows, it might not be the best way to live the rest of your life.